the eye. The eye, which is very important in visualizing the world, of course, and here we see the different components. We see the cornea, we see the pupil, which is the opening of the iris, then we see the lens, and then we see the, the retina back in through here, the vitreous body would be here, and then you have the choroid and then the sclera. And the retina itself has different cell layers. You've got the pigmented epithelial cells uh, lining through here. And then you've got the other part of the retina that's not attached uh, to the pigmented. It's just pressed up against the pigmented epithelium. And you have the rods and combs are located here. You have the bipolar cells and the ganglion cells that interact with the brain. Uh, and if you look at the outside, these are the, the tarsal glands, which uh, makes uh, your eyelid a little waxy to prevent the tears from falling out. And there's eyelashes, and then of course the skeletal muscle, so we can move our eyes around. Uh, inside, uh, on the white of the eye, as uh, which is, this would be the uh, the sclera right in through there, which is the white of the eye. All around through there, uh, we have the conjunctiva, which uh, uh, is between transition, uh, between stratified squamous epithelium, uh, and then it goes to uh, a simple columnar epithelium with uh, goblet cells. The cornea itself has different layers. We have uh, the stratified squamous epithelium, and kind of cuboidal cells along the base. So this is the squamous stratified squamous epithelium aligning it. Below that is uh, Bowman's membrane or anterior uh, membrane. Uh, it's not a true membrane, it can't be separated from the rest of it. And then you have the general uh, 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 stroma uh, cells. We have the keratinocytes located in through their nuclei that we see. And then uh, there is a membrane, decimase membrane, and then there's a posterior Endothelium. This is actually endothelium, not epithelium, uh, in this layer. Uh, the cornea uh, epithelium is on this side, as we see, stratified squamous epithelium, cuboidal cells in through there, Bowman's membrane, sclera, decimase membrane, and then we see the endothelial cells located uh, in the bottom part of the cornea. Again, we can see the epithelium, endothelium, uh, uh, this is uh, 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 the different membranes that we that we can see. Uh, the um, this is a, the iris, uh, and, and in the iris we see that there's really no epithelial cells on the anterior surface, but there is on the posterior surface, uh, and we see the pigmented cells and the myoid uh, epithelium that's located in through there. Uh, you, you see the ciliary processes, um, and from there we can see zonules that project out that attach to the lens. There's a ciliary muscle in through there, a scleral spur right in through here, a trabecular meshwork, and the canal slam. So these are some of the things that we'll see. Stratified squamous epithelium, where you start picking up blood vessels if you're in the sclera. The cornea itself has no blood vessels, but in the area they first pick up blood vessels at the edge of the sclera is known as the limbus region. We see the stratified squamous epithelium and then blood vessels that we see there. So the limbus region would be right in through there and right in through there. In fact, it's all the way around the eye. Pupil in through here, the iris, the ciliary processes, uh, cornea, lens, and the retina. Uh, the macula of the retina is the most sensitive portion of the eye, and then this would be the blind spot where the optic nerve comes in. So you have photoreceptor cells all the way up here to the aura serrata. And then uh, the uh, uh, photoreceptor cells become a, a, a secretory layer right in through there and become secretory all along and through there, and then uh, they become the pigmented layer where the pigmented layer on the outside becomes pigmented all the way up to the cellular processes. And then um, uh, 
it continues to be up to the iris and then it becomes a myoepithelium. So uh, um, part of the retina from the brain goes all the way up there under the iris as we see. Ciliary muscle, uh, be a smooth muscle of course, and here we see a smooth muscle and the nerves. These are myelinated uh, axons that we see here in there. Ciliary process was a secretory process on the outside, this artifact there, but you can see the pigmented layer below there. The pigmented layer is part of the blood aqueous barrier. Again, we see the ciliary muscle, the scleral spur. Uh, we can see the secretory epithelium, the pigmented epithelium located in through there, trabecular meshwork, canal of slim, uh, congenitiva in through there would be the stratovasquamous epithelium on the surface. Uh, a uh, little higher mag of this region, you can see the ciliary process of the secretory cells out there which secrete the aqueous humor, and then the pigmented epithelium which is involved in uh, maintaining a, a barrier. Uh, same type thing we've seen before, the muscles uh, spur uh, the, uh, the uh, epithelium on the, on the surface, uh, two epithelium, you have the epithelium uh, which is uh, secretory epithelium as well as a pigmented epithelium below. Now if we uh, look at the trabecular meshwork, so this is the anterior chamber right in here. Trabecular meshwork, this fluid here goes in through there and then finally goes through the canal slim is how it gets. So this is a trabecular meshwork which interacts with the, the uh, anterior chamber. So here we can see the anterior chamber, this is the trabecular meshwork, and the canal slim, which ultimately will remove the fluid. So this is a source of removal of fluid, and a secretory epithelium on the ciliary process is a source of the fluid, which maintains the pressure in the eye, which maintains the orientation of the different lens and the retina and things, because uh, the eye is under, under pressure, but not too much pressure. Too much pressure would be glaucoma. And that is a, a foul up in the regulation between uh, the fluid production and the fluid removal of the eye as removed at the trabecular meshwork that we see in through there. Um, uh, at the, uh, the iris itself, you can see the pigmented epithelium at the bottom, the myoepithelium in through here, which is the dilator muscle, uh, and then, but we have smooth muscle and the constrictor muscle is a constrictor which constricts it. And here we see the lens. So these would be lens fibers running this way, and these are cuboidal cells on the surface, and here you see the lens capsule. Uh, this is the anterior surface. Posterior surface does not have any cuboidal cells that are in there. And we can see that again, uh, this is the constrictor muscle of the iris. Blood vessels in the iris have continuous capillaries to help maintain the barrier. Uh, but here we see the lens. And at the end, at the bow region, where uh, the lens go all the way over to the bow region, like the bow and arrow bow region, these cube cells become elongated and they become the lens fibers. They are the lens fibers that run in the direction of the light that goes through here. Uh, also, the, the lens is attached, the capsule is attached to zonules, and here we see some zonules. Uh, in through there. The zonules on one side are attached to the lens, the other side they are attached to the ciliary processes along the way. So we, again we have the myoepithelium right in through there which is the dilator muscle uh, and and then we have trabecular meshwork. So fluids produced here goes around uh, the pupil and then is absorbed in this corner of the eye pretty much where it's close to where it's been produced. This one slide we see the lens uh, the iris, unfortunately, some of the lens components got in here. Don't dis disregard this structure here. Um, it sucked some of the cells out of the lens in here. But here we see the capsule and the cuboidal epithelial cells. Again, we see cuboidal epithelial cells, the capsule, uh, and the iris. And so of uh, the different cells, there's many uh, layers. We won't be concerned too much about uh, the layers, you get the sclera, which is the white of the eye, the choroid, which is a rich vascular uh, layer, and then you have the retina. The retina has multiple layers of cells, the photoreceptor cells, the bipolar cells, and the ganglion cells that we can see. You do have blood vessels coming in from the, uh, from the optic nerve, uh, and they seem to go through here without uh, any real problem. 
but you can see here that this portion of the retina is not attached firmly attached to the eye uh, to the pigmented epithelium pigmented epithelium is attached but the vitreous body pushes this against there but you can see how easy you can have this derich detached retina because it's not firmly attached and so what they do is come in there and they take a laser and attach it attach it back but here we can see the rods and combs in through here uh, so this is the photoreceptor cells the bipolar cells and the ganglion cells would be in this region again we can see the uh, the ends uh, so these guys would be uh, touching the pigmented epithelium if it was here so these are the combs and the rods uh, that we can uh, we can uh, see there uh, here we can see uh, the choroid, the rich choroid with a rich vascular supply, the pigmented epithelium is attached, the rods and cones, their nuclei, bipolar cell nuclei, and the ganglion cell nuclei. Um, here you can see the, the comb, comb shape, and rods, and their nuclei, and the pigmented epithelium. You can see how pigmented epithelium actually projects up uh, in, into that area. So pigmented epithelium, choroid, sclera, uh, and then this is the retina with the photoreceptor cells, bipolar cells, and the ganglion cells. Um, at a certain reason, you, at the macula, the top uh, layers have been removed. The bipolar cells and the ganglion cells have been removed. You just mostly have photoreceptor cells, which uh, increase the acuity. So that's the spot that we're looking at. When we concentrate our eye on something, that's the area that we're using is the macula. Uh, birds and some of those have more than one macula, but we only have basically one in each eye. Pigment epithelium touches a choroid. So here we can see where the optic nerve comes in, and you can see there's fo no photoreceptor cells. So it is a blind spot because you have no cells for photoreception to occur where the, uh, the optic nerve comes in. Here again we see where optic nerve comes in and the stoppage of the, bi of the photoreceptor cells. You can see the rods in through there and the cones and again we can see the blood supply coming in through here as well as the nervous tissue there's blood right there and blood right there and there uh, and feeding the inside now uh, there's uh, we actually covered some of the things that the light comes through the cornea the lens and then part of the retina uh, and then there's also structures that influence you know, the iris the ciliary bodies and processes uh, that occur. Uh, here we can see uh, the uh, uh, this is a ciliary muscle uh, with the big minute with the uh, uh, nerve cells uh, in through here so we're basically right in this region in through there there's a uh, the, the the lens in through here uh, this would be the the conjunctiva uh, going in through there and then finally this so this would be the cornea uh, and the sclera back up in that region uh, here on this specimen we see the ciliary processes uh, we see the pigment epithelium behind the iris a trabecular meshwork and a canal slim uh, here we see the, the, the constrictor muscle uh, but also right in through there we can see the dilator muscle um, and here we see the whole uh, of the lens uh, uh, there's cube cells on this side but uh, sorry this is the cornea this is a cornea so this is stratified squamous epithelium Bowman's membrane decimated membrane and we have the pigmented we have the endothelial cells transport endothelium located at the bottom this is a cornea again uh, the the iris lens uh, and you can see how fluid is produced here, goes around the pupil, and then absorbed back into this region, in that region there where you have a canal of slim. Here's a hieromaga that, showing the secretory portion and the canal of slim, uh, which fluid is removed once it goes through the tobacco meshwork to the canal of slim. Uh, this is a, just another view of that uh, cornea, uh, uh, corner area, where you have secretory epithelium as well as pigmented epithelium and the myo uh, myoepithelium of the dilator muscle. Here again we see uh, the optic nerve coming in, has no photoreceptor cells uh, on the side. This particular specimen is the one that we sucked the, the cells out and they got into the anterior chamber. Anterior chamber, posterior chamber, uh, this is the, the lens. 
uh, but here we can see nice zonules. These zonules reach all the way back to the aura serrata, and whenever the muscle contracts, that uh, that um, that uh, releases the pressure on the zonules, and the zonules become more uh, more um, uh, the the lens become more spherical for close vision. So, whenever you're reading a book, your eyes get tired because uh, the muscle is contracted, and as a consequence, it's it's uh, loosened the zonules, and the lens is more spherical. You're out hiking, looking at a distance, uh, no problem. Your muscle, uh, your ciliary muscle, is not uh, contracted. So, ciliary processes, nice zonules running in through there that we can see, the iris um, uh, that we see in through there, and. Um, here we can see kind of the development of these things. We can see this is the eyelid, and that the the stratified squamous epithelium of skin becomes uh, the conjunctiva that's inside the eyelid, and then we have stratified squamous epithelium over the surface of the cornea uh, that we can see uh, see there. Uh, similar type thing with the myoepithelium. Uh, which is a dilated muscle and then smooth muscle of the end of the of the iris. Uh, also, you can see here where the, the optic nerve gives rise to the photoreceptor cells that are located there in the retina, and that uh, layer continues only as a secretory epithelium, and then there's a pigment epithelium on the iris itself. The pigmented uh, layer at the base becomes the dilator muscle that's uh, in the iris as we see. So we can see these different structures and where they uh, originate from. Uh, again, the optic nerve going through there uh, and no photoreceptors where you have the optic nerve. Here's the lens uh, where the cuboidal cells on the anterior chamber are giving rise to the lens fibers. Uh, that, that happens right here on the surface. So that's pretty much it.